Hey guys, it's Bailey Wiki, and we are in a we're in a catacombs. Came out today, part of a much bigger release for Bailey Wiki, November 2025. We're going to use this as a backdrop for what should be a pretty uh, quick tutorial. But check this out. So we've all been in a situation where we've got a trap, and we're having to be in a 5e world here. And we're using Monk's active tiles to you know make the trap tile appear, and then you know there's a oh, we got a critical hit, so we fell down, we took some damage, and then we've been in a situation where we want to make switches, and the switch makes this uh, blade come out, and then we switch it back off. And we've all I've showed you guys how to do this stuff. We've done tons of tutorials. Monk's active tiles is super powerful. But like, if we open these things up and we look at all of the variables involved here, like how many of you actually remember how to set this up? You've got landings, you've got, uh, you know, potentially um, variables being set. You've got sound files being uh, th that are firing. I mean, this is like kind of complicated stuff, right? And what you end up doing is you know, just looking at our trap actions here, like here's different landings if there's a, a fail or a success. Like this is not easy stuff to go and just do if you're not immersed in this every day. So what I want to show you is what I actually use to create these effects. And it's a new module. And it's called Dorman Lakeley's Tile Utilities. Now, I don't know this developer, but I have... Uh, it's Jess H Music. I have I have reached out to them with some suggestions, but uh, this tutorial is going to be about this what this does. And I'm now I've got the interface open here. I'm in my tile layer, and I've got the special Dorman Lakely tile utilities. And what this module essentially gives us is recipes for making really common interactions. So switches, lights, reset tiles. So you want to reset like things that you've set up and then different kinds of traps. There's actually multiple kinds of traps in here. So I'm going to walk you through why I think this is an interesting module. I think there's definitely some improvements that can happen to it. And I'll tell you those ideas at the end and you can leave in comments if you agree with those or if you think there's something else. But the, the basic concept of, hey, I'm going to create wizards that works with Monk's active tiles that lets you create stuff and even like look at variables and things like that. It just makes it a lot easier to use Matt. Matt is so powerful. There's so many options that having a little helper utility like this, Storm and Lakely style utilities, I think is a pretty good idea. So let me walk you through the basics and what it does. So first off, remember how to get to it from here. You also probably want to know that there are uh, settings that you can set in the global settings. So you can actually set the default tile images. Right now it just uses generic stuff, but if you use Forgotten Adventures, or you might use my things, you can set your default switches and other things to uh, to work with your artwork. And it even gives you the ability to set sounds and all that good stuff. There's even an experimental features, which is like check state tile, um, which you can experiment with yourself. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see what kind of trouble we get into. Okay, so let's go to our tile, tile layer and the tile utilities and see what we've got to work with. So notice you can import things so um, that you can actually create stuff and then import them later. I really recommend, this works really well with MassEdit. So if you've never used MassEdit, I'm gonna open up my preset browser. And here's my local instance of MassEdit. And I've already created these things, these switches. I used this tool to create them. And then I set some custom things like their images. And now I can drag a switch out anytime that I want and these things are just fully functional, right? I've got traps. Here's a falling like pit trap. Complete with rolls and everything's done, right? And then I, I further customize this by like being able to change the trap to like, you know, big black square or maybe some some spikes, that kind of sort of thing. So the idea that you can like create your stuff using tile utilities and then you can make some customizations and then save it to your preset browser using mass edit, I think is a really powerful com combination. So here's what it feels like though. When we want to create something, first of all, it says, look, I detected another switch. Let's call this switch two. Let's automatically sign a variable and we'll have images and sounds that we can create. And then what you do is you just drag where you want it to show up on the canvas. So now we've got our new switch. And if we interact with it, 
In this case, it defaults to double clicking. You can see it's uh, setting the variables that we need for a switch to be able to set. One of the improvements I think that can made, be made to this is building in some tutorials on how to use variables. But if we open this up, we can see it automatically created all of these actions for us. Sets the, the variable, changes the variable, has landings built in, switches the tile image, kind of everything that you need and you didn't have to go and research it on Discord or go into the wiki, that kind of thing. So that's an example of a switch. Lights are another really common one. Notice we create a light here, but it corresponds to an actual light. So if we click this, well, you can't see the light because it's on, on a good background, but let's move it over here. And it's just this really convenient light switch that we can uh, move around. And of course, this can be invisible to your users, just something they can hover over. But let's look at what the light settings are. It just switches the tile image, right? It has two different images for on and off, and then it toggles that light. Super simple, but pretty effective. Now, if we do create traps, we'll see a lot of different options in here, and this is great. So we can have an image trap, or we can have a trap that like activates another tile. Image trap being like, you're gonna have a tile that you're gonna do something with, right? So you're gonna hide the tile, you're gonna switch it for something else, or you'll do nothing. Uh, let's say we'll hide the tile. Uh, give it a starting image, it can be any, any tile at all. It's got a nice convenient sound built into it. You can as assign the number of, of triggered players. I mean, it's so good, right? This is the stuff you need to know and it just kind of takes you through like a workflow actually figuring it out. I want to target all the tokens within the tile. I want to do save and damage. So I can just automatically apply damage or I can drag in items that will cause damage. I can also do combat and attack rolls. So of course, a lot of this is D&D 5e, right? So if you really want to get the most out of this right now, it's on D&D 5e. You're going to end up dragging in actors that have abilities and you can make tokens appear, disappear. It's like, it's very, very flexible. You can also make teleports, which I found interesting. Although teleports and add active effect, I couldn't get those to work. You may have different mileage, but I could not get these two things to work. I think they're bugged but I've let the developer know as much. But still, being able to apply these things or create teleports is like very promising in terms of um, like just general capability. The fact that you can apply a saving throw to a teleport, like that's kind of cool. These are like just hard things to conceive of and then implement in Matt without this to have uh, to give you uh, support in it. But to be able to just pick a destination and you create your teleport, all really, really good stuff. So I recommend you look at it. Once it creates your item, of course, you can come in and change it, kind of like how, how I've done, right? So with this trap, for example, I changed the sound. I just, But it's easy to change stuff. You just come in here, change the sound, and and that was it. Now I've got this, this trap that I, I really like, you know, and then I can add, like, different... Uh, images to it and stuff like that. You may want to double check that it's not trying to assign images. Sometimes um, if you want to control the image, you just might want to check what it's automatically assigning here. But overall, like a pretty good experience and well executed. And I could see myself using this, uh, this tool to really deploy traps and other things using like current best practices for amongst active tiles. And it gives you that just extra complete steps that normally you'd have to go and research. So let me know what you guys think if you see this as helpful. The, as far as the ways I think this could be better, I think that uh, being able to support tagger would be a really big deal, right? So being able to have tags assigned to things is especially helpful with creators like myself who want to create things that you guys can use. So being able to support tags is just going to make things move better through compendiums and into your world and stuff like that. Uh, it's also interesting that you can see all the variables in play. I think giving a tutorial or a little bit more help in terms of how to then use these variables in, in other sequences, just something I don't built in, seems like that would be really helpful. Um, I think any support for mass edit where you can create stuff and then save it works great. Mass edit already does that. Um, but, you know, I, anything, I'm totally self-interested in being able to use mass edit to manage all the stuff I build. So any integrations with that, I think, is a big deal. 
And I think instead of um, creating a uh, teleport as a trap, I think just having it a, a, the a category for creating teleports is probably going to be important. As you're creating teleports that go within a scene or between scenes, teleporting is just like its whole thing. So I'd like to see teleports maybe as its own action. And there's also a little bit of bug if you want to create a trap, for example, like let's just like use all the defaults here. And if I want to draw it on the scene, if there's a tile, it'll move the tile as well as draw the uh, the tile. And that's that's not not good behavior, obviously. Um, but yeah, you can look at things that are already in the scene and like delete them and modify them. You can go to where their location is and select them. Like it's just it's just pretty good. Like a, a lot of little things I think that will help us as GMs. So just looking at the changing state advanced features. So this I think is pretty interesting, right? So like this does give you some ability to like figure out how you want to use switches. So I imagine it's something like, um, hey, we want, we want to know that switch one is off. Then we want switch two and we want to know that that's off. So I think in here is uh, ways that we can use switches and logic to make um, more interesting puzzles and stuff. So this is interesting. I think it probably is going to need uh, a little bit of polish or tutorial or, or something like that to really kind of understand how to use it. But you guys let me know what kind of mileage you get with this. Uh, like I said, short tutorial today, but I find it interesting. Let me know what you guys think as well, if you think this is a, a project worth pursuing more uh, as I do. And with that, thanks everybody for tuning in. If you like the assets that you saw today, they're all available. You can go get them with a single month's Patreon subscription and you can get all the stuff we've ever built. And until we see each other again, thanks for all of your support for the channel. Please like and subscribe. Leave a comment where you feel able and have fun making your maps.